this is Time Tunnel TV. Tonight, where the past is present and the present is past, as we go into the Time Tunnel. Hello again, <laughs> I'm Alec McEwen. Welcome to Time Tunnel TV, the show that brings famous figures and celebrities from both past and present, asking questions about what they have achieved over the years and what they are doing in the current year. As always, we'll be showing you our very special performance with Toby Gordon, who will be performing his song, Take the Dead. Take it away, Toby. Snow falls and we stand tall, adrenaline's up as you pass against the wall. Cause you take my hand and show me the power of a woman You take my hand and I, I take the lead You take my hand and show me the power of a woman You take my hand and I, I take the lead Cards were down. I do you know it's real? If you don't know how you fell, could you be the one that fooled my perceptions? Sun rays and we're still plays. We're always misbehaving in this midsummer haze. Do you even deserve the mansions? So this is where we're headed. Are you sure that you're ready? Say this is where we're heading So let's take the next Step cause you take What a fantastic way to start the show. Thanks for that, Toby. But don't worry, everyone at home, we will be seeing Toby again at the end of the show with his final performance. But on with the show and on to the guest I will be talking to. Here is a documentary telling you all about today's guest that's not happening. You guessed Warren it. Warren is seen as one of the hottest actors in Britain over the past couple of years, starring in 18 TV shows, 14 theatre productions and several radio productions overall to date. Although his films have been the main talking points with his highly successful year playing the likes of Bilbo Baggins in The Hobbit, the pre-sequel to In the Book series to the successful Lord of the Rings trilogy. Highly regarded actors like Sir Ian McKellen and Orlando Bloom will be reprising their roles in the original trilogy as Gandalf the Grey and Legolas, and with upcoming actors like Luke Evans and Lee Pace who are sure to take the world by storm for their roles as the Bard and Franduel. This film is one to look out for this year with Unexpected Journey Around the Corner and the next instalments of Desolation of Smaug and the final film for Battle of the Five Armies.
Martin Freeman was born on September the 8th, 1971, in Oldershot, Hampshire, but now lives in Herefordshire with his partner Amanda Abington. The couple have two children together and have both starred in the same production of Sherlock, where Amanda is his on screen wife to his character, Dr. Watson. Freeman's interest in acting went on when he joined the youth theatre group at age 15, but it was not until he was age 17 that his confidence in his own acting led to the decision to pursue it as a career. He went on to attend Central School of Speech and Drama. This career choice led him to the early stardom as he was the face of the hit mockumentary series The Office, created by Stephen Merchant and Ricky Gervais, who played the role of David Brent, the boss of the company based in Slough. Now have brought the vision to the recent version of The Office US, which has been highly successful in both America and Britain, as it follows and also elaborates the same storyline. This is so important, I should run to answer it. Shut up, shut up, shut up. The story follows a group of typical office workers where the workday consists of ego clashes, inappropriate behaviour and showing the dullness which paper production entails. However, the workers follow different paths and make the office fun to be part of. The US version is based on the hit BBC series basing main characters on the UK counterparts. Martin Freeman happened to play one of those main characters of Tim Canterbury, whose hidden crush with Dawn the receptionist caused ups and downs throughout due to her engagement to Roy, making every episode a great plot twist to follow. Freeman went on to appear in all three Simon Pegg and Edgar White's trilogy, with a brief non-speaking role in Shaun of the Dead, followed by a brief cameo in Hot Fuzz as a police officer, but eventually becoming a main character in the 2013 finale in the trilogy World's End. Martin has also been successful in television and has been seen as the face of Sherlock's closest friend and her investigative partner, Dr. Watson, within the series of Sherlock, which alongside co-star Benedict Cumberbatch has lifted them and made them two of the most wanted actors in the recent months due to the series' popularity around the world. Since then, it's become very successful over the past years, gathering many good reviews and plaudits off critics for storyline, which follows a brilliant Sherlock Holmes and his partner, Dr. Watson, and the show is not known just for its ma main roles but it's a range of supporting roles as well. The series goes through three seasons by 2013 and has also been confirmed for another season in 2014 for Sherlock Season 4, which should be released at the start of 2015. More projects include the likes of television series adaptation of Fargo the film, in which Martin will play a big part within the series and has also become a big hit with audiences, earning itself a grand reputation in 2014 for the first season. And season 2 also, with a date of 2015, is upcoming. So there you have it. Martin Freeman's career has been at an all-time high from 2010 points and onwards. You guessed it, we have Martin with us on the show. Join us after the break where I'll be asking him about his career so far, both past and future. Welcome back from that short advert break. And to introduce our guest star of the evening, it was in Sherlock and The Hobbit, Mr. Martin Freeman. Thank you very Welcome much. Welcome on the show, Martin. Pleasure to be here. Okay. Pleasure to have you here. Um, Just do the formalities. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Throwing you off. Carry on. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so we'll start from the beginning, shall we? The very beginning? Uh, the very beginning. It was dark. 
and then all of a sudden there's bright light and two hands not that no 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 um, no we're gonna go a bit forward in time oh, okay. to that to, to the office yes where you first came onto the scene yes what was what was it like being cast by Ricky Gervais for that at the time um yes um interesting not your traditional uh interview stage as you can imagine with a sat down in a casting room with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant um it was it kind of set me up for exactly what the office was going to be like uh complete and utter chaos and moments of pure genius um and you know what a first experience you know it, it was my first obvious big break and uh more or less fresh out of um drama school um and um here i was on a huge hit and we knew it was going to be a hit uh it sounds very uh arrogant to say such a yeah. thing but it, it had to be it was just it was just such of the moment you know what i mean it seemed yeah. to it, it seemed to connect with with everyone and everything that was happening just then and you know ricky's and steven's writing was just was just perfect um i think some of the best bits was the lack of writing i think that's where the true genius came into it when when there wasn't really much um uh, dialogue and it was just just the chance to be a great actor just using your own emotions you know the uh, yeah, my character Tim and, and obviously uh, the receptionist Dawn and, and the saga there. Um, it was just you know a great opportun first opportunity and, and the success it got it was well deserved. Really, it was, you know, when when you first auditioned for the role, mm -hmm. did you think it would take you to the levels that it's taken you? No, because back then, I mean, you know, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant weren't well yeah. known either. It was a, it was a bit of a gamble on the BBC's part. This this comedy, so we were all. All of us who were working on it knew there was something amazing happening here. Uh, but you never really know until it hits the audience, because <laughs> sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't, you just, you just don't know. Um, and yeah, it's, we thought it was good, but we didn't quite realise just how good it was going to be and received, really. That, that's yeah. a big thing. It was, it was the, the reception from the audience was just, yeah, more than you, you could have hoped for, really. And, and it, it was just special times. and. I'm glad it only ran for you know for the the, the two seasons really. If anything, well, it gone on anything longer than that. I mean, it's still going on now in the USA, isn't it? Well, yeah, exactly. You know, I think that's the the, the impact that the office had, and that just goes to show you how good it was. The fact that not only uh, was it huge here, but the America audience that sometimes doesn't get our comedy picked it up. Now, obviously, they've they've taken it off and, and run with it, and you know, Americanized it as you will, and, and yeah. turned it into much more of a Insta horror, uh, Insta horror. So I'm just looking at yeah, we're going to Simon Pegg getting stabbed in the hand. Um, it was, you know, it was um, just, yeah. Yeah, we're just going to talk about this clip that we're going to play for a moment. Yeah, um, it's about looks like it's about your hot buzz. Yeah, hot buzz in the, in the uh, well. The yeah, I mean, you know, Simon, you know, very kindly offered uh, me a, a role in it. I'd obviously <laughs> had a walk-on appearance in uh, his last one in um, Shaun of the Dead, and then uh, just a quick cameo playing his sergeant, I think it was, yeah. um, in this one. Um, yeah, it was, it was, you can't turn down a Simon Pegg. Oh, no, especially, exactly. especially not from, from that trilogy. It's well, exactly. And, fantastic, and then, wasn't it? Yeah, and then At World's End, you know, was, um, was, a, was a great opportunity to be involved in, in, in that as well, yeah. really. And didn't even have to think twice about it. It was like, yeah, yeah when you're filming, I'll be there. Yeah. It was that simple. So, um, moving yeah. on. There I am, look. There you are. Uh, moving on slightly from, okay, so now, now we're moving to like the, um, the Hobbit films. Yeah. Uh, what was it like to film them? Because they're just incredible uh, yeah, I mean, films, aren't they? Like, well, exactly. I mean, I mean, you think back to kind of the, um, the Office and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm working with Peter Jackson on, yeah. on his Hobbit trilogy. Uh, and I, I was always a huge fan of The Lord of the Rings, you know, starting with the books yeah. uh, and The Hobbit book. You know, that was my, The Hobbit book was my favourite book as a kid. Loved it, read it again and again and again and then obviously uh, read the Lord of the Rings books next and loved them too um, and loved and when and when he made the films I was just like with everybody else you know every December for those three years first in the queue first in the line got to see him and then we just they were epics they were modern epics weren't they really yeah. and, and as soon as you know I was asked to audition for the role of Bilbo it was again an, an no brainer a no brainer yeah. yeah so I had to do it excellent um, moving on again um, Obviously, you were already big on the scene mm. by the time, like... Thank you. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say so. You know, you'd, you'd already played roles in, like, Nativity and things like that. Yes. Like, you, were, you were a known actor, yep. you know, but then 
Sherlock came along. Yes. Where you starred alongside Benedict Cumberbatch. Well, if it wasn't for Sherlock, I don't think there would be Hobbits. Um, no. You know, just it's just an absolute brilliant British drama, brilliantly written, and not necessarily including myself, but brilliantly cast. You know, uh, Benedict just he plays the role uh, um, just so so well. If it wasn't for him. Um, being able to play Sherlock the way he does, there wouldn't be a Sherlock. You have yeah. to have such a character, such a power on the screen to play that role. And I'm just happy that I'm, I'm along for the ride, really, as, as Dr. John, John Watson, really. It's, um, but it's just been staggering again, really. I mean, you, you may be lucky as an actor to kind of have that one big hit uh, yeah. and then to have gone from The Office into Sherlock. Uh, with you know things like you said, like Nativity and Love Actually along yeah. the way, you know, yeah. I'm a very, very fortunate man, and especially with that home, my career's okay. progressed as well. Um, we're just going to come out of this now, but Ooh. we'll be back with you shortly. Wonderful. Okay, um, I think it's time to go for another break in the form of our very own live news report. Hello and welcome to Time Tunnel. And these are the top stories today. Jimmy Savile case grows more controversial as reports suggest that he has sexually abused victims aged from 5 to 75, covering 28 NHS hospitals over the UK. After all, the preparations for the Olympics have finally arrived in London and will BBC Sherlock will have a Christmas episode today and we have found out that Jimmy Savile abused the range to victims of 5 to 75 over 1960s to 1970 period. Jimmy Savile was once seen as the love top of the pops Jimmy Fix It presents raise over millions for hospitals all over the UK but only recently has it now been brought into light that many victims claim Jimmy Sauer sexually abused them and in some case raped. We have learned that he used to his position to power view to share work to take advantage of bo both boys and girls and his show has even hospital visitors regularly after being allowed to do walk within patients blocks and freely without question from staff. The statistics say that over 400 victims have come and been them abused by Jimmy Savile and 328 of them were children at the time were scared to come forward and face the consequences which followed in the information from someone who had done so much for the community and had such a positive media image. It was only recently that their woman admitted their abuse during their time at Duncroft, an old girls school which triggered them for a flood of hundreds of people telling different sides to Jimmy Savile's more than stories later on the BBC. Brightest TV show Sherlock Holmes is expected to have a Christmas episode. This year, more than this is story. London is a live report. Luke Carville on. Hello, I'm Luke Carville, and I've been given exclusive access to the set of Sherlock's London apartment on Baker Street ahead of Sherlock season three, which is set to be presented in the year 2014. But other news has grabbed the headlines regarding the series in recent months. There have been rumours that there will be a Christmas special episode in one year's time from now in 2013, where we see our favourite pairing, Sherlock and Watson, continuing the upcoming dilemma of the series, perhaps giving us a taste and hint of what is to come ahead of a new season of season three. But actor Martin Freeman will ultimately reprise his role as the curious but faithful Mr Watson. He's already hinted to us that it's pretty likely that an episode will be shown as a Christmas special and will compete with the likes of Doctor Who's episode on the BBC. This is huge entertainment news as now we expect to see BBC ratings blow the likes of Channel 4 and ITV out of the water for the year. But as now, the duo of both Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman are already hoping for possible awards this year, with the Emmys recently announcing the lineup of each category late on this year. Benedict Cumberbatch is in the running to get lead actor for his role as Sherlock in the miniseries category, while Martin Freeman is aiming to get an Emmy for his supporting role as Dr Watson. With the Olympics coming this year later to London, this year gives Britain a chance to show off its brilliance, facilities and skills of their own athletes in the capital Andy Murray will be part of the singles competition and court on Wembley. While Bradley Williams it will be enduring the long during task of archery, gold cycling time trials. Thank you Luke, this has been Jack Walton from Time Tunnel News, news channel which gives you news from both the past and the near future. See you soon again from Good Night From Us. Welcome back to the show with Martin and me. So, Martin, we spoke before and you briefly mentioned Love Actually. Yes. Now, obviously, I mean, it was a while ago now, but you, can, you were working 
alongside such an all-star cast. It really was, yeah. I uh, mean, you know... Um, Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, Rowan thank Atkinson. you. Rowan Atkinson. Um, Emma Thompson. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you know... Yeah, you just, yeah, the list goes yeah, on, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was, it was an yeah. honour, privilege. Uh, and, you know, to be working um, on a British comedy like that, it's, it's kind of, you know, dream come true, really, as a British actor. That's what yeah. you want, to be on... Uh, an ultimate kind of British classic comedy film, uh, which it was it was, and the fact that it was a Christmas film as well was always always a bonus. Oh yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it was even fun playing you know a porn stand-in. Uh, it's not often a role <laughs> yeah, that you often audition must for. Have been, it's, yeah, uh, it's uh, interesting to say the least. Yeah. Um, very good, and also uh, in Ali G. Yes. With uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah, so I was kind of hoping most people forgot I was in that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was great working with Sasha. Um, I mean, again, he's kind of um, a bit like Ricky, really. He's, mm. a, he's a genius of his yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, he gets a lot of stick for controversy yeah, and stuff, but he is, he is a genius. Uh, well, that's it. I think, I think that's one of the, the reasons what he likes to do, a bit like, again, a bit like Ricky, really. He likes yeah. to push, push the boundaries of, of what's accepted and what's not and, and play on these kind of characters, uh, yeah. these stereotypes and, you know. And just completely exaggerate them. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. It take, takes them way beyond the, the realms of reality and, and that's where the comedy comes from. And, I, you know, it was, it was great fun playing that kind of role. Absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, so moving on. Mm -hmm. um, you also starred in a film called Fargo. No, I didn't star in a Just film called you, Fargo. There you, was a film called Fargo. It's now an American role. TV oh, series called yeah. Fargo, which I'm starring That's in. That's the one. I yes. just read the end of that. Yeah. Um, no, that's okay. Yes, I, so, I, so, so I take it you, you've not really watched me in it then? Uh, no. No. Um, Disgraceful. Can you tell me a Disgraceful. little bit about that? Uh, yes. Well, obviously, as I said, it's based on the film, which I wasn't in. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, so it's, it's set in, in the town of Fargo, uh, and it, it's kind of taking on that kind of... Um, you know, dark uh, comedy um, in its in its setup, really, and makeup, and it's just been um, again, you know, other, other than having to use an, a terrible American accent, um, yeah. it's it's been absolutely brilliant. And again, I mean, it's it's just crazy to think of you know where it all started with the office and how one thing's led to another. You know, the the allergy and the love actually, and and then the Sherlock, and then you know the Hobbit, and it, it's all through doing these. Like, you know, obviously. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to have got the attention of Hollywood into doing, into doing films like this. Um, real gold, actually. Actual real gold. Real? Yeah, yeah. No. No, I, I, no. I didn't think no, so. I know. Uh, but no, it's been, it, it's been great, you know, and, um, you know, just wonderful, wonderful experiences. And, um, yeah, to, to then, you know, the next stage, you know, the, the, the things like the Fargo's and, you know, what's next, really. It's just, yeah. it's exciting being at this point now. Yeah, it's just... On the up all the time. Well, that's it. Yeah, you know, I don't know. You know, the, the, there's lots of lots of things out there to do. I've now just got to pick wisely. Before it was more a case of I, I was yeah. lucky if I got it. Now I'm in, in in the other position where I can say yes or no, and and yeah. Now, so it's now my responsibility to pick the good roles. Yeah. Um, so there's more pressure on me to make sure that the next role is the right role for me. I mean, you. I mean, you know, as, as brilliant as an actor you are, you were mm -hmm. very lucky in your break to get to get to be in with script writers such as Ricky, yeah, Sasha. Of course, yeah. yeah. I mean I, I, I won't deny that, you know, obviously yeah. um, it could have easily gone to somebody else and they'd probably be doing what I'm doing now. Uh, and mm. I absolutely recognise that. And that's one of the things that helps keep you grounded. You know, I don't yeah. I don't take this overly seriously. Um, you know, it's it's it is just a bit of a dream at the moment and, and I'll and I'll ride it that you know, the roller coaster until until it's my turn to get off and mm. I'll be fine with that. You know, what you know I've had already up to now just an absolutely amazing experience so yeah uh, if it stops now then you know fair enough uh, I, w I won't grumble too much but i hope it does keep going and i'm uh, you know and I'll, and I'll work hard to make sure that i can keep it going for a bit longer uh, there's more i still want to do there's yeah. more i want to go yet now there's um there's a saying in show business mm -hmm. that goes don't work with children or animals yes so what was it like working in nativity <laughs> yes um yeah, no, it was it was great fun. Yeah. It was it was it was really good fun. Um, it's 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 kind of true. I mean, nowadays it's it's a lot easier. You know, I think back in the day you don't you don't work with children because they didn't know what they were doing. But the children actors these days are just yeah. you know, they're better than me. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the scary thing. They're just so well trained. They're so well uh, knowledgeable in what they're doing for the age that they are. Yeah. It's, it's quite scary, really, when you think about it. And it was just it was great, great fun. Um, and again, you know, the animals again, they get. They're much better trained and treated than the actors are. The, yeah. the, the amount of people that come along with all these act, these animals—it's true. 
Um, but yeah, it's been, it, it was, well, it was just another wonderful experience, really, and I feel you know, fortunate to have worked on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving on again. Um, we'll Sherlock. We haven't, we haven't talked enough about Sherlock. Have we not? No. Tell me something more because about Sherlock. Because we've got the next season coming out next year. Next season coming yes. out. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's kind of, it's moving on from where we're at with our yeah. you know, relationship. Go on, you're going to stop me now, aren't you? Okay, yeah, I'm going yeah, to stop I'm not even now. allowed to plug. Sorry, that's, in unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. No, that's for. disgraceful. I'm not okay. even allowed to plug. I know. Carry um, on. But no, we'll have you again on no, the show carry soon, on. sooner Whatever. rather than later. Um, so that's, it's been a pleasure as always from Martin. Thank you for coming on the show today. Um, we hope to, we, obviously we hope to have you here again soon. Um, we hope you have more success in the future. Um, yes, thank all the you. best to you. Um, so, thank you very much. Oh, you want to shake my hand? I want to shake your hand. So I'm not allowed to plug my show, but you want to shake my hand? No, okay, I'll exactly. Okay. Um, so that, yeah, that's all we have time for here on Times on the TV. What Sherlock? But before <laughs> before we end, we have one more performance from Toby Gordon, and he will be performing Shadow in the Dark. Take it away, Toby. gonna clarify I spoke to you in trust but you just couldn't specify the sensing tactics are a perfect way to say goodbye the ways and cultures yeah we failed and you know we tried you let me down made me wonder why I'm even it this passion wanted enough to keep you all subside your fit these sly intentions have been found and been made so clear you're in reverse when I'm trying to step it up again you saw this as a grain of wood but now you see the splinters in the as a light, but now I'm just a shadow in the dark. You saw this as a grain of wood, but now you see the splinters in the bark. You used to see this as a light, but now I'm just a shadow in the dark. Grain of wood, but now you see the splinters in the bar. 